This one doesn't have to be. Full body rash for two days. No other symptoms. No recent illnesses. No eczema. No asthma. No food allergies. No medication allergies. Just generalized dermatitis. Very itchy. When you're smart and you look in your chart review, and you look in your chart review before you present to me, because I've already looked in the chart review. Um, so three weeks ago she had an ED visit from Fast Track. She had an itchy rash from cheap earrings. And they diagnosed her with a contact dermatitis from her brass or copper earrings, whatever it was. Yes. So the id reaction as opposed to uh, Freud, but it's auto eczematization <laughs> But you basically get a diffuse disseminated contact dermatitis from your local reaction a few weeks previous. Um, and it's basically, they think it's an immune-mediated reaction to your, you know, whether it's your belt buckle, earring, but any kind of contact dermatitis, it resolves, and then as the body kind of revs up, it gives you this usually fairly diffuse um, reaction and it's, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, they're visible. I've seen it on the arms. You see it on the hands like this. It's not always, you know, like this. You can have a little more, you know, erythematous, you know, scratchy dermatitis, but a lot of times it is the itchy pack rules. But, you know, you have to be a very good historian to get this diagnosis because it's not always a reeling. But, you know, kind of diffuse very itchy rash, no obvious um, recent illnesses or any other symptoms. But antihistamines, you can use topical steroids for this, and, if it, and it can be resistant to this initial treatment, and feel free to refer these kids to Derm for fancier stuff. But, you know, if you see this, topical, you know, 1% hydro, hydrocortisone, Benadryl, follow up with your primary in a week, you know, you can refer to Derm, it's not better in a week or two. Last one. Itchy bumps. Okay. Umbilication, right? But you'll see it, they'll scratch. And you'll ask them, they won't always explain it, but you'll, you'll ask them. We had one last night. She itches, and then she itches somewhere else, and the new lesions pop up there. Yes, that happens all the time. That's what she's self inoculating herself. Um, no redness, no pain, no crusting, no discharge. It's just these little, and they're not always umbilicated. You can have molluscum that doesn't always have, not all of them will have your central dimple. Most of them will. Um, a lot of times you won't see it because the kids have already scratched the roof of the vacuum off. So you'll all, instead of a central dimple, you'll see a central scab because the kid will have scratched the roof of it off and there'll be a little spot of blood that's scabbed instead of, you know, it'll obscure what would have, what was previously the central dimple. Um, not on palms and soles. But this, I had, I had a resident think, you know, hand, foot, and mouth because he thought he saw something in the mouth and had this, but it was on the back of her hands, nothing on the palms and soles. So your incubation, two to six weeks. It's a pox virus. Um, in your population, you'll see it more commonly as an STD. Not in my population. Skin-to-skin um, -skin contact, it can also spread through third-party objects, so sponges, towels, uh, wrestling mats. But the vast majority of it is fingers. You scratch them, you spread it to somewhere else, you scratch them, you touch your sibling. Um, the individual lesions last up to two months, the entire process can last up to a year. So this is another one of those things that drives the families crazy because it just never goes away. It'll go away and then it'll come back. And you just can't, you just can't seem to get rid of it. Um, you can also get a complication of like a dermatitis over the molluscum from all the itching. Um, you can use topical steroids if they have the dermatitis, but if it's just the itchy molluscum lesions, antihistamines, calamine lotion. Don't do anything more than that. If they're really bothered by it or if they're on the face, it's causing, you know, greater issues with the family, you can refer them to Derm and Derm can do various things. Uh, liquid nitrogen, curatage, but curatage will lead scars. You know, would you have, have bumps or like learn scars from getting cut out? 
Um, but there's various other fancy things that Durham can do. Um, but for the most part, you just treat them supportively, and they will eventually go away. So, any questions at all? Various rash issues. Yes? Uh, serum sickness, which is a little like benign compared to Steve Johnson's, which is not benign. They kind of look alike in both situations of drugs. Is there a way to differentiate the two? Mucous membranes. I mean, mucous membrane involvement um, is your key to Stevens Johnson. The timing's um, a little different. <coughs> and the serum sickness, the most common thing, the rash is a little different. Um, but the most common thing is that the serum sickness kids will present their joint pain will be their biggest complaint, usually. Um, I mean, I don't know if any of the other pediatricians want to chime in on that. Nikolsky's IMD positive is Steven Johnson and TEN. It will be negative in serum sickness. So that's a very important clinical sign at the bedside. And the Steven Johnson and TEN rash is painful, as opposed to the serum sickness rash is not painful. So I think those are the things. And purpuric rash, as opposed to, as you mentioned, serum, serum sickness typically is a deteriorate rash. So I think those are some of the differences which will help you to differentiate one from the other. And you question them, you mentioned that's the most important.